All right, guys. So in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how we complete the database portion of your portfolio for your case study. Remember, we have been looking at the Angel Care Assisted Living Facility, and I'm going to start off from scratch. Now, in the class, I showed you how to go to the Windows button. No, no doubt, I don't know which operating system you have, but your Windows button, mine is Windows 11, so my Windows button is down almost in the middle of my taskbar. But um, for yes. most com computers, the Windows button icon or the start icon is um, is in the lower left-hand corner. Now, I won't put my mouse over there because I have the weather over there. So if I put my mouse over it, the weather is going to come up. But sufficing to say that the icon is also going to look a little bit different, but you will always see what appears with four window panes. Okay? So you'd have clicked on the window pane and you'd have looked for access or typed in access. Now I'm going to do that because I already have access up with the sample portion of the database management complete, but I'm going to show you how to create a new one. If you are doing it from scratch you would click on the windows icon and then click on access and then click on blank database but because i already have access open i'm going to click on file <clears throat> then new oh, one miss, miss. yeah yeah so we are doing a check figure where to come remember so we're not seeing anything you're doing you know you're not seeing it no it is on the blank uh, yes on the page itself okay but i think i know why is that hold on oh. susan i know why i did not remember to share the um the the part that I'm doing now. Right. So let me go back. So you click on file. Seeing now. No, you're still on the same page. I'm just seeing the data management um information and so on. So I'm not seeing where you click down the bottom or what to go on. That is not on the screen any at all. Hold on. Well, that I am trying to find something on my one too. I'm trying to find the access. All right. <laughs> can, can you see both now? No, miss. She's not showing it to us yet, Natasha, but that's why we're not seeing it. Oh, what I'm seeing on, on my screen is the database management. That's, that's it. it. And, but, yeah, but there's no movements on it. You're not I doing anything. Do it, nothing. Two section we are saying you're trying to create is not on there as yet. All right. Could you take down this page and start over? I'm going to um stop the sharing. Can you see both windows now? One second, it's, it's loading. I, yes, I was tra I'm trying to avoid the um. I'm gonna I'm gonna change the share and tell me if you you can. I'm gonna stop it now and I'm gonna change it to just the two windows because there's another window I need to manipulate, but I don't want to manipulate it. Um, and you see it. All right, so it should be loading. You should be able to see two windows side by side. Side by side. No. All right. So, All right. So to create a new database now. We click on file. Miss, miss, hold a second. How do you reach here? All right, so we're saying that you click on the Windows icon that is on your taskbar. Remember, <clears throat> remember how we created the blank database on um on Thursday? You're not going to create a new database, no, Susan, because you already have one. You have one with a table. So I was just showing you again how you'd create a new one because I don't have a database on this computer. It's on the computer at school. Remember, you have your database started already. So you're not going to need to follow this step. You, the steps you're going to follow after this is how to create the tables and how to create the queries and stuff like that. Hello? For my sake. Yes, miss, me here. But for my sake, can we still start from the beginning this time, please? Since you're recording it. Just start from the beginning. That's when you're finished. We can go over it and practice it. Just start from the get-go. All right. Start everything. Go back down to the, 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 the windows and just start everything from the beginning. Please. Hold on. This screen is freezing up. 
All right, so bring open open the database and then let me stop and share my screen because it's going to cause problems. So can you see this the database and another screen behind it plus the black on the right hand side? Because I want to follow you step by step. As a person, I think I want You're to not listening. You are not listening. I'm asking a question. Can you see the database management page? Another window on the right hand side and a block on this on the right hand side as well. Yes. Okay. All right. So to do the blank database, you click on Windows. Now remember, students, that if your your operating system is different from mine, it is not going to look the same. You have to use your intuition to see and know what you're supposed to do. Some of you have a this search bar that is here is at the bottom here beside the Windows icon. I can't use show you because I don't have that operating system, right? But suffice to say, you click in the search box and just type access, A-C-C-E-S-S. -S. When access, the version of access you have come up, just click on it. It'll take a little while to load, depending on how fast or how slow your computer is. Then to create a blank or brand new database, you're going to click on the blank desktop database icon. Once you click on it, the dialog box will come up asking you for the file name. Your database should be called angel here underscore and you type your name as in Suzette Case or Tashma Wright. I'm not going to type any name here. I'm just going to type your name there. If you are going to be saving your database on some in another location other than the documents folder, it is very important for you to click on the browse icon, which is this open tan looking folder on the right hand side of the file name box. So you click on it it will open a new dialog box, which is a file new database dialog box, which will allow you to scroll up and down on the left-hand side pane to select where you want to save your file. Now, by default, meaning generally, it will save it in the documents folder. If you wanted to save it elsewhere, you'd have to select where. I can't tell you where you're gonna save yours, but I am going to save mine in a folder called PCC. And it's in a, in a, in a yes. You hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you for hearing me. All right. The access that you said that we had to click on, is it something they have to install on the computer or it would have been in the computer itself? Is is it is one of the two. Your some per persons may have it, some persons may not have it. So if you don't have it, you okay, have to install it. It seems as if I don't have it because when I click on it, I went into the web. Okay. All right. So that means either that person has a Chromebook, I'm not sure. Um, but I'm not sure it's gonna work for you there. So you may have to use the one at yeah. school. I don't have it as well. So um I'm gonna try and see if I can get a copy for you guys. I but somebody has to remind me when I go to school later because I have it already, but I don't have it on a thumb drive. I'll have to get it from a computer at school to take to give to you. All right. So when you um when I'm I'm gonna be saving my access file in my PCC folder in my portfolio folder. See, I have one there already. So I'm just gonna put a two at the end just to differentiate it from the one I had before because this is a solution that you're looking at there. I'm gonna type two and click OK to save my file in that specific area. Once I have chosen where I want to save my file, then I click on the create icon. It will open up a brand new blank database. And just as how we did in the first in the class on Thursday, you have your table one, right? I'm going to look at the requirements for table one. I'm going to just bring this down a little bit and look at the requirements for the first table. And it says you're to create. So we're here now. Create a table. We're at point two. Create a table called residence with the following fields, a unique resident number, for, that is a for, and it's going to be the first and last initial and a two digit number, first name, last name, date of birth, gender, 
next of kin address. And the address is going to be split into street, town, and parish, and a telephone number. So all of these fields are going to be your table. Now, if you recall, all of these things are also in your spreadsheet file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the spreadsheet file that I had saved before so that I can, oh, hold on. So I can use it to... to build a table. All right, so I actually have a residence table already, but I'm gonna show you, and I'm only going to show you how to do one table because it's going to waste a lot of time to do the three tables because the procedures are the same. Copy and paste the fields that you need and, um, if there's anything that I need to show you how to do, probably like maybe like the um no, there's like this one I might need to show you how to do the resident rooms. I'll show you how to do it. All right, so for the residence table, what I did because the fields are resident number, first name, last name, etc. What I did, the first name, last name, date of birth, all of these fields down to the telephone number are in the same order on the residence sheet. So what I did, I went to the residence sheet. I highlighted the from first name, click, so I click in first name, hold on my mouse, drag across to the right, and I came right to telephone number, and I highlight everything for everybody in there up to telephone number. Then I right click on the highlighted area, and I select copy from the drop down menu. Then what I do is I create a new sheet. So I click on the new sheet icon, which is this plus sign here. It gives me a new sheet. I am not going to start pasting my data in cell A1 because in cell A1, I want to put the field that is not in the residence sheet, the field that says resnum, resident number. So in B1, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say paste. So right away, it, it almost finished building my table for me. So for the resident number, I'm gonna shorten it. You, can, you don't have to shorten yours. I'm gonna put resnum as the field name for the table. I'm going to open up these columns so you can see. Remember to open up the column, you can click and drag or you can double click between the columns. I'm double clicking. Remember too that I did not put in any date of birth in mine. So, uh, but make sure you put in your date of birth. An easy way I showed you how to do the resident number, uh, it's supposed to be the first and last initial plus a two digit number. I make up the two digit number first. I start with one zero. You don't have to start with one zero. You can start with 15 or 42. Just as long as when you autofill, the number doesn't go over into a three digit number. And I press enter and type 11. I have created a series. So Excel can follow the series. So once I have my 10 and my 11, I highlight and then I autofill. Remember to autofill, you use the fill handle, which is this little green box in the lower right hand corner of the selected cell or cells. So I'm going to click on, put my mouse over it until I see that black plus sign. That is if that tells me I'm ready to also fill. I'm gonna click, hold on the mouse and drag down to the last person. And here it did the numbers. Now if I had you say, so I didn't want the numbers to go one after the other like that. I could say 12 and 15, right? So there are, there's like three digits between. Highlight and it will auto fill using the same sequence 12, 15, 18, 21. It all depends on how you want to do it. One of the reasons why I do this is to make it easier for me to create the resident number. I don't want to be typing four digits, four characters. So I make up the two numbers first and then I put in the initials. So I am going to type DA for the first and last initial, SB. J, B, C, D, A, G, E, J, S, J, C, J, A, S, D, W. And there we have our resident number, right? No, I'm going to... My sheet is called sheet one. I'm just going to call it res for the time being. I'm going to rename the sheet to res so that I can have a name for my database. So now I have built my resident table. 
in the in the spreadsheet i'm going to import it into the database so i bring back up my database and how do i import it i click on the external data tab i go to the import and link group i click on the excel option because that is where my table is so i click on it i click on the browse button to search for where the file i'm looking for is it's in my pcc folder and it's this file here called sample to excel workup so i double click on it then i click ok it's not going to take me through a series of steps right and it's important for you to read the steps and follow so it's asking you which worksheet you want the the, the, the that um table is on it's called res so i click on res and there's a the table i click on next I want to select the box that says first row contains column headings because I want to make raise number, first name, et cetera, as the column headings or the field name or the attribute name, right? Click next. Then it asked me um, if I want to put in the data types. We can do the data types from here, but because it's gonna take so long here, I'm not gonna put in the data type here. I'm gonna show you later on. Then I click, I go to next. Ask me if I want to set that access to the primary key. We don't want to do that. I want to choose, we want to choose our own primary key. If you allow access to choose your primary key, you will notice it gives you an ID number here and it gives you an auto number. We don't want that. So we want to choose our own primary key. If the table does not have a primary key, then click on no primary key. When you click on choose my own primary key, it brings up the most likely field in the drop down box, which is res number. If that is not the field that you want to use, simply click the drop down box and select the one that you want to use. Fortunately for us, this is the one that we want to use. So we click on next. Remember, the primary key is that field, that attribute, that column heading that uniquely identifies each record or row or tuple in the database table. Now we're going to, it asks us to import the table and import it to what name? We're going to type resident table, resident table. Don't have to put the word table on it, but I'm putting it on it. Doesn't make any difference. Then I click on the finish button and voila, you can, you don't save the import step. So just click close and like magic, the resident table will appear on in the left pane of the, in under the all objects section of the database. Now, remember, you always get this table one. You don't need it. So you can right click on the tab for table one and close it. I'm going to, so you can't see the table now. If I double click on the table, this is a data sheet view. Right? This is the data sheet view. Um, there are two views for the table data sheet view as well as the what we call the design view. Now, those two views are found under the home tab. So I just clicked on the home tab. And if you are in the data sheet view, the view icon is going to look like a construction icon with a triangle, a ruler, and a pencil. This is a design view. So if I want to go from data sheet view, which is what we are in now, to design view, I click on this icon here, right? Now, also, if you look in the lower right-hand corner where I have the burgundy space here, I can also use here. I can toggle between, can click on here for the data sheet view. I click and click on this icon for design view. It doesn't matter which one of the icons we use, they both work, all right? Now we want to go back to the design view because we want to make some possible changes if, that's, if we need to. So remember it is in the design view that we make the changes to the fields. We, we, we can create tables and add fields here. We can edit the fields. For the resnome, we want to set it to four characters to four because the instructions did say that you're supposed to have um, a unique res number with, let us see what the instructions say, a two, uh, first, and, first and last initial with a two digit number. So we want to come back to the database and we make sure that we're on resnome. We want to change that to four characters because two letters plus two characters, two numbers equal four characters. And that's all we're going to do to the race num field. The next one that we need to change though is the date of birth because all of them are shown as short text. And the date of birth needs to be of data type date slash time. So we have changed that. There's nothing else there that we really need to change. So we're going to, I'm going all I'm going to do for the description is I'm going to put resident number. 
And for the DOB, I'm going to put date of birth to explain what they are. And believe it or not, your first table is complete. All right. Let us move now into the second table. And this table, point three, says create a table called rooms with the following fields room, code, two letters and two digits, description, type, room type, and cost. Now, that table was already prepared for you, right? So I have it in a tab here called room table. You don't, if you have, if you struggle to copy and paste, you can always type it. There's no, nothing that says you must copy and paste it, but the copy and paste, it makes it much easier for you and it goes much quicker. So I'm not going to do this table. I'm not going to copy and paste because the same procedure as the first one, we highlight the description. So this is what I'll be, this would have been our room sheet, highlight from here to here. Right click and we copy and then we go to the new new sheet. So we clear create a new sheet, go to the new sheet, and we would click on. So this is we would paste it. So this will be our room table. What I'm going to do, I'm going to import this. And I'm definitely gonna show you how to do the next table because there is something specific that I want you to do for the next table. Because the next table has some formulas in the fields that we're going to copy and we can't paste them just like that. It's going to create problems for you. So let us go. So we're going to go back to the database and we are going to save this table because we made some changes to it and say yes. No, we're not going to lose any data. So don't worry about it. Say yes, right click and we're going to close. Then we're going to go back to the external data tab and click on the Excel icon again, click on the browse button and we'll click on, on the same file. And then we're going to click OK. So I have 10 minutes. I have to do this quickly. So the table was going to be a uh, room table. So I scroll down to look for it. So here it is, room table. I click on it. I click Next. I check the box that says first row contains column headings, then Next. I'm going to ignore this for the time being, Next. And I'm going to say, choose my own primary key. I'm going to choose, it says room code, which is what I want to be my primary key. Then next. And I'm going to leave the name as room stable and say finish. And it will import the room stable. All right. So this is the room stable. I'm going to go to the design view. And I'm going to, so it put currency in already for me. The room code, however, let me see what I have for the room code. So it's a four digit code. So I'm going to change the field size to four. And then just type room code here. And the rest of it is fine. I'm going to click save. For the currency, I could just simply set the auto, that's the decimal places, to two. And then once I've done that, I just simply click on the save icon. It's always going to tell you when once you make changes to the field that some data may be lost, just click. Yes, because you're not going to lose any data. Right click and close. But let me see if I can complete the next table in the 10 minutes time or the less than 10 minutes. All right. So with the next table, the next table says you have to create a table called residence rooms. Right. So I'm going to just copy this. And I'm going to create a new sheet. And I'm going to rename the sheet resident rooms. I'm going to put a two on it to differentiate it from the previous table. Press enter. Now it gives you some specific fields that it wants. Let us look at the fields that it is asking you to use. It says you are to have the following fields. Resident number, room code, code, amount paid, and amount due. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet. And I'm going to, from the residence table, copy. I'm going to highlight resident num, just that column, right click. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go to the new sheet I just created, which is resident room two. And I'm going to right click in cell A1 and I'm going to paste, right? So that's the first thing. And it wants the room code. Now, you, the room code, I'm going to type a room code here because you are going to decide which resident gets which room. So I'm not going to put in a room code. Then it asks for amount due 
an amount paid. We're going to go back to the spreadsheet. Remember, Suzette and others, you have not done your spreadsheet yet, so you don't have you don't have these things as yet. Right? So this is my amount due in Jamaican dollars. I'm just gonna do it in Jamaican dollars. And this is my amount paid. We're gonna highlight the column, the data, so the heading plus the data. Right click, copy. Then I'm going to find my sheet that has my table. Which is resident room store. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste. But if I paste, it's going to give me that. So what I do, I say paste special, which says, which is a paste option that says one, two, three, or values. So we select values to paste, just the raw values. So I click on that and paste values. I'm also going to take out the JMD part and just leave amount due. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to copy and paste the amount paid. Highlight the column as usual, right click, copy, go back to the table that I was creating, right click in D1 and paste values. So now that I've pasted the values, I'm gonna highlight them and I'm going to, in a number group, change the data type to currency. So it puts on the dollar sign. For the room code, you're gonna fill in the room code based on who you want, where, in what type of room. Remember each room has a, you have different types of um, types of rooms. So what you can do, you can go back to the rooms table and from the rooms table, you can look to see who you want to have what and select the code. So if I wanted the first person to have a single occupancy room, with shared facilities, I would copy this room code here and paste it beside a person. Remember, I did it already. So I'm just going to go back, look for my rooms, my old rooms table, and where's my old resident rooms? And I'm going to just copy out the room code that I have here because I don't want to waste the time. Right? Highlight, right click, and I'm going to copy. And I'm going back to my new table. And I'm going to right click. Since I had copied the heading as well, I have, to, I have to paste over the heading and paste. I don't need to paste special because there's no calculation in this column. So I just say paste. And that is my room, resident rooms table. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to import it. I'm going to import it in the database just like the others. So the same procedures, external data, Excel, rows. Click on the file that I'm working with. Click OK, and then I'm going to look for the new the new sheet, Resident Rooms 2. Click on it. Here is my Resident Rooms. I go to Next. Um, yes, so make sure that the first row contains column headings, and Next, ignore this for the time being. Choose your own primary key, which is we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna say no primary key for the time being, and click Next. And then we're going to change this from resident rooms tool to resident rooms table. Then we click on the finish button. And this is our resident rooms table. We're going to open the table and then we're going to change the view to design view because we need to change some things. So, oh, I, oh, I double click on the wrong table. I should have double clicked on this one, resident rooms. So, those are putting the currency for us. We want to fix the field size for this door. It's four, and room code is also four. We're going to type room code here, and we're going to type resident number here. You can always set this to two decimal places, as well as this one to two decimal places. And your resident rooms table is com almost complete. Now we want to create a composite key. So we click on ResNum, hold on the mouse, drag down to our, our room code, and we select the primary key up here. And it puts the primary key beside the two of them. We click on the table to save the table and say yes. And we can go back to the data sheet view. Now this concludes the creation of the tables in the database in our next lesson. 
we're going to be looking at how to do the relationships and start the queries.